Hello viewers, my name is Adam. Uh, I'm Aaron. This is Sicky Media Productions, bring you another movie review. Alright, so before we go into any details about what we're going to be talking about, let's uh, take a moment and just talk about this. It is becoming incredibly important for the audience, the movie going audience, to realize that not everything has to be seen as far as trailers are concerned. Yes, managing expectations has been oh, like it's very hard nowadays since um, social media um, basically runs rapid with so many scoopers and also people who just want to get um, make a name for themselves and find out what type of rumors is going on out there or what type of leaks that they were able to find out for multiple different types of movies, TVs, and whatever. And we understand that's a market that is a you know legit form of business and it is a place for it, especially when you know the whole name of the game is to be first on the scene or at least be the one that everybody can get their source information from because you are supposed to be that reliable source. But I think it's become a way to um, crazed in you know for lack of a better word uh, when it comes to the concept of you know letting that information get sent out uh, especially when you think about all these kinds of spoilers for movies that are highly anticipated coming out that completely ruins or ends up you know hurting that movie in the long run mm -hmm. so we can give ourselves a pound of back for avoiding as much as possible from what Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness has in store um what's going on? I, I didn't have super big you know uh, anticipation for this movie actually is there's, there's not that many Marvel movies I actually do have that particular anticipation for because there's just uh, I, I enjoy watching them I enjoy those, the, uh, those those comics but you know as this series continues to push out more and more films it's not as much as a as a uh, go-getter for me as far as I'm concerned but when it comes to the characters that are appearing in this film, I am a huge Doctor Strange fan, and I'm definitely a Scarlet Witch fan. So having them both in the same story and movie was a was something that I was really geeked to go ahead and watch. Yes, um, for one thing people it should um, keep in mind for this film is that first and foremost, this is a Doctor Strange sequel. Y'all keep uh, listen to that. It is a Doctor Strange sequel. Yes, it has multiverse of madness that's attached to it. But first and foremost, this is the sequel to the movie that you saw earlier, which was Doctor Strange. But that's not to say that uh, some required content prior to the story that unfolds in this one uh, should not uh, like it, it technically should be consumed. Uh, case in point, of course, the first Doctor Strange movie, and then you also have WandaVision. But even for that, um, Avengers, uh, the three Avengers movies of Age of Ultron, mm -hmm. because that introduces Wanda. Infinity War. Infinity War, and of course, Endgame. Which, like, and, and, and possibly, like, the, basically the premise of Spider-Man No Way Home, but that's what you, those are the requirements for watching um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Be that as it may, if you don't watch those films, it's not like you're not going to get some form of an idea going into this uh, with, you know, references that goes back to those movies. But it would be far more enjoyable if you actually go ahead and watch that particular, those contests beforehand. Yes, yeah, because, um, and contrary to what the title of this film is, Multiverse Madness, it is still relatively, for some reason, a much smaller film than is perceived as marketed as. Yeah, this is very much a character piece where it's focused mainly on uh, Dr. Stephen Strange and Wanda Maximoff's uh, you know, personal um, issues that revolve around them as characters in this film. And yes, the, mul the multiverse is a vehicle for which that uh, the film decides to traverse their stories. Um, but <laughs> I'll say the movie does get the madness right mm -hmm. more than they do the multiverse uh, um, aspect of it because like there's like not to really uh, we don't want to go too much into um, knowing what goes on to this film it's just that the multi like it's not as expansive in this film as one might expect from the yeah. title 
That's true. And to be honest with you, there was another movie that came out not too long ago that actually deals far better, in my opinion, on the concept of the multiverse. And that is totally something, a, a, a huge gem that everybody needs to go out and watch, or if you got the chance. And it's called Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I mean, look, just listen to that title. It stars Michelle Yeoh. It's from A24. Uh, it's a huge, it's a independently um, done multiverse film that deals with some of the very core family theme that this film also um, like displays aside to explore itself, just through a different still plot. But uh, yes, um, the screenplay. Done by Michael Wardron, he was brought in after doing his work on Loki mm -hmm. that um, introduced more of the multiverse concepts to the MCU. Uh, for this, like he decided to uh, dive deeper into uh, probably make a screenplay that better suits the director than mm. it does for actually transversing to the multiverse, which probably was brought on for it, which is um, Sam Raimi. <laughs> that's something to be interested, uh, you know, to t t take a listen to and talk about. This is probably, other than uh, Eternals, this movie here definitely feels as though he's Sam Raimi had his touches on it. Technically, like TD two with his Thor. Movie yeah, you're right. And James Gunn's is um, guards got. The thing is, it's very rare where Marvel Studios films are able to allow for a distinct director to showcase their um, narrative voice. Mm -hmm. And this one particular film all, like, allows it, in, in a lot of cases, in full force, more of that in production. Mm -hmm. But let's go into characters. Uh, Doctor Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, <laughs> is, is, is looks like he's being more the anchor of the MCU at the moment. Yeah. Um, He's a major supporting player um, going down the line, especially with well, not only because of his significance into the MCU as a uh, as a whole, but I think it's very rarely, um, very few of the previous phase characters are um, having like are expanding upon their stories, and it's nice to have some form of an anchor um, going forward. And with this particular uh, outing with Dr. Stephen Strange, this movie is more concerned upon his personal growth and journey as an individual. Specifically when it comes to the whole idea of what it means to be happy and what responsibility truly uh, looks like for an individual with his abilities and his um, standing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's trying to balance, like, it shows, like, the movie tries to uh, see how well he can uh, maintain his emotional connections with the people he cares about, as well as the responsibilities of him um, basically being a protector of the uh, realm, so to speak. <laughs> he's not, he's yeah. not the Sorcerer Supreme in this movie, yeah. which is a, a title that's now, now given to um, his, uh, mainly, uh, which in the films, like an assistant, but looks like he's the versus a sort of reverse with Benedict Wong, his character of Wong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, those two have great chemistry amongst, oh, yeah. them, amongst themselves. Um, Wong himself has been a very um, recurring, a major, a recurring player in the Phase Four um, very recently. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Doctor Strange, um, Benedict Cumberbatch, he's been given the task of playing multiple versions of himself in this film. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, it's done the marketing campaign to very degrees of success because mm. of the mere fact that the film is not as expansive as you might think. Again, they do tread into different, you know, realms of reality throughout the, uh, throughout the multiverse, but they're not done in the sense that it's, they're trying to uh, expand upon the concept of the multiverse in that, in, in that sense. It's only used as the vehicle for these characters to express themselves and talk about the specifics about their specific issues in this particular um, outing. Uh, back to Wanda Maximoff. Yeah. Elizabeth Olsen has been a really treat of an actress uh, ever since she's made her debut in, as Wanda. Uh, her she, she pretty much 
owns that role. I mean, she is Wanda Maximo. She puts her whole heart and soul into it, and is definitely shown here in this film, and specifically whenever she ends up you know, donning that uh, the red you or aspect of her abilities. Um, she is owning the moniker of the Scarlet Witch, mm -hmm. finally uh, embracing that role in this way, more like we said, as an antagonist. Um, very more so, she's most very much an effective villain mm -hmm. from that the MC really is able to showcase. Um, Man, because of we, uh, she's one of the few people that we actually did see the her tragic growth, as we say, mm -hmm. and how it led her to this moment. Yeah, uh, definitely. You want to you want to be able to see her growth from start to finish because this is definitely going to be on the um, darker end of her journey as far as this film is concerned. Um, part of that journey is basically uh, the introduction of a new character mm -hmm. of America Chavez, played by Sochil Gomez. Uh, she is like, minus the depiction of what she is from the comics because her personality in the comics is more livelier mm -hmm. than it is depicted here. Yeah, she's um, very toned down as far as I'm concerned of where she should be. Yeah. For uh, like, it's, any America Chavez fans, she, unfortunately enough, from what um, I'm able to see from what this film decided to introduce her as, she's mainly just used as a plot device. Yeah. Uh, and basically just introducing her character in general. So hopefully there's promise for her character. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I did enjoy her. I mean, I, or at least with you know the few things they did with her. But you really don't get a sense of who she truly is as an individual in this film is not concerned. This this movie's only concern about Dr. Stephen Strange and Wanda Maximoff's uh, Scarlet Witch. That's really it. And speaking of America Chavez, this is actually the uh, like um, one of the things that the MCU is, is leading towards is the Young Avengers. Mm. Um, something that I not, have not heard or read what people have yet to say is that this is actually the first time we see multiple um, contenders of the Young Avengers in one setting, mm -hmm. because um, because of the one the carryovers from one division is the introduction was the introduction to of her sons mm. of Billy and Tommy. Uh, they play some of a very limited role here yeah. in this film, but they're they're there as well as a carryover from the original Doctor Strange uh, for both of um, Chirita Edge for Baron Mordo, <laughs> limited role, yeah. different version of Baron Mordo. Mm, this is the multiverse, of, after all. Not the one that um, was introduced on the Prime 616 universe, mm. as well as Rachel McAdams, who... The one that got away. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's who she has... She was who she was introduced as, and that's where she's you know being left off as. Mm -hmm. Not nothing really you know, spectacularly done with Rachel Adams, you know, mm -hmm. character. I mean, and I, honestly, they could have done more with her. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I mean, if they're not willing to do push the envelope any further, there's nothing else we can do at this point. That is a mark that you could definitely, you know, hold against the movie on that end, or at least with uh, Marvel as, uh, uh, in general when it comes to that particular character. But again, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Cameos, we're not going to discuss here, but no. multiverse expects some cameos, but mm -hmm. thing is, <laughs> that's what we're going to say about that. Exactly. But yeah, let's go to the production because that's where, uh, uh, because I feel so, um, so much important is how a person, uh, the, how an audience member will feel about the film is is how the how this movie was produced. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is going to be handled of how much of a fan you are of Sam Raimi's work. Yeah, uh, we're talking about those unique, you know, camera angles and Sam Raimi's whole vibe is this very campy, yet highly energetic, like, gothic approach to mm -hmm. anything he does. Even when he did Spider-Man, there was that, uh, that sense of energeticness, that, uh, that pulpy, like, comic book feel that is very, uh, that's very reminiscent of his earlier works from the 90s to early 2000s. Mm. And that's really much on, you know, it's put on display here. Um, especially when we look at the character Wanda, and that's really where most of that focus comes, you know, goes into when it comes to um, um, Remy's uh, special little vibe, his directorial, you know, approach. Mm -hmm. He, that those were some of my most, you know, favorite aspects of this film. What he did with the character of Wanda. 
Mm -hmm. uh, good. Uh, if you was looking for be recognized, a, a specific work of which how the movie plays out, I recommend watching Drag Me to Hell, mm. which is a very uh, good, uh, distinct uh, way of, of comparing how Elizabeth Olsen and also the how Sam Raimi directs the the horror like elements that is sprinkled throughout the film. Um, surprisingly, like. It's probably it goes into certain um, shocking territory. Not too shock. I mean, this is still a Disney produced, uh, you know, superhero flick. So it's not going to go completely left field where it's just gore and chaos and mayhem all over the place where you can't take your kids. You could definitely bring the kids go watch this. But it is a considerably, a considerably more, slightly more violent addition to the MCU mm -hmm. than they have yet to, they have done so far. Yeah. Um, so that Sam Raimi is like has is no strangers to doing. It's right up his alley. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately enough, it would be a case that Sam Raimi usually do uh, tend to have a lot more prep time to do these works as is it shows that he was just a person to the carry over the torch of what was previously being done mm -hmm. and the lay work with the groundwork from what the MCU so um he's not the writer of the film but he is clearly enough the director yeah so at the end of the day um uh, we still relatively enjoyed this um latest addition into this Doctor Strange film series in the MCU mm -hmm. and from that we say it's a good movie still yeah, it could have been better. It is definitely things that, um, that if they were, you know, tweaked up a bit or actually allowed to have been done in the way they probably were originally intended to be done. But at the end of the day, what we got was an enjoyable flick that we enjoy, uh, that, we, that anybody could go out and watch and find something about it that they liked. Or if you just don't like the uh, samurai style in general, then I'm sorry, you're probably not going to like this film. Yeah, it's probably not for you. <laughs> So there you have it. That was our review for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, guys, as always, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell down there at the bottom for notifications when we hear from you. Did you already watch the Multiverse of Madness? Or when are you going to go watch it in general? Uh, we want to hear from you. What did you think about it? What are, or what's your hopes and dreams about it? And, you know, and whatever. Um, be sure to look at our social media uh, um, sites of uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for social media reviews. And we'll see you guys later. See ya.